Greetings, I'm Demonac, and it's arena time. As usual, I'm disappointed by that last run, so I'm going to see what I can do better. The choices are Warrior, Mage, who I would like another crack at, but I just did that really recently, and I do try and change it up every time for the channel. So, Warlock, still played fairly recently, but there are only so many classes. And Warlock, it's been, I've had a few runs in between, so it seems like it's Warlock time again. Shall be mine. Yeah, yeah. Alright, we're starting off. So he's a 4 3 for 3. This is a 2 3 for 3, but it can kill anything. Now, normally I'd rather have the 4 3, right? Because he deals twice as much damage to a hero. Pretty straightforward. Good. Theoretically, he can be healed. I probably won't have anything to do with that because I'm not a priest, but you never know. There's also the Pine Size Summoner, who, if she gets out and stays alive, can be really strong. But I think I'm going to go with the Blade Master. More killing power. Um, these guys are, eh, Shadow Bolt, well, he's pretty good, actually. But Shadow Bolt kills creatures, so we're taking that. Um, Raid Leader is pretty good in Arena, but Void Walker is very good. He's one of my favorite one-cost creatures. He's extremely straightforward, doesn't do anything exciting, but as a 1-3, he can survive pretty much anything else that costs 1. Very few exceptions. And a taunt helps. You know, taunt means that even later in the game, your opponent's going to have to spend something, an attack or a card, to get rid of him. Okay, I stopped babbling. Um... Croc is okay. I still don't like Magma Ragers, but Loot Hoarder draws me a card. And he's got two attack for two costs, so he's fine. Holy crud. Now this is going to take some thinking. We have the Pit Lord. He's a 5-6 for 4. He deals 5 damage to my to your hero. I don't like him very much. Okay. I could get a Yeti for 4, right? He's a, This guy has only got one more attack, one more hit point than a Yeti. And he's dealing five damage to me. He's dealing a full, more than a full turn of attacking from the Yeti to me. One turn of attacking for a creature is a lot in Hearthstone because creatures have a relatively low rate of survival. Like their, their lifespan is not very long to be expected. Now, the other two cards are really interesting, right? Twisted Nether, super expensive, but obviously it's a Wrath of God. It just, this card lets you reverse a bad situation. And you could maybe plan for it in advance with your taunt stuff and maybe manipulate it so that you have more cards to play afterwards. Now, it did take 8 mana, so you probably can't play much else in the same turn that you play it. But you can attack with all your guys first, if, that, if you have any guys, if that does any good. Then blow everything up. And then you, you probably aren't casting much off. So you might have 2 mana to drop something. Still very, very strong, though. Really good card. On the other hand, there's Bane of Doom, which you may have seen in a previous video. I got one of these in a pack. I think that was in a video. It's very interesting, okay? It costs 5, it deals 2 damage. It says 2 a character, so it sounds like it should be able to damage players. I haven't actually tried that yet. Because the thing is, if it kills a minion, it summons a random demon into play. So, you spend 5, you do 2 damage to something, which could be boosted by spell power, obviously. And then, But if you finish something off, you get a free demon, which is totally random. It's not random from the demons in your deck. It's just random from the demons that exist. So, here's the thing. You could get a Void Walker, which, at this point, you're... It's actually not that bad, what you got for 5 mana, but it still seems kind of expensive. It could get you a Blood Imp, or a Flame Imp, or which is a, like a 3-2, right? It could get you a Succubus, who is 4-3. It could get you this Pit Lord, who is a 5-6. It could get you the the uh, Doom Guard, who is a 5-7 charge. It could get you Jaraxxus. I don't even know what happens, because here's the thing. It doesn't trigger their battle cry. For a lot of things, that would be a drawback, but... Almost all demons have a battle cry that is a disadvantage. 
That means if I cast Bane of Doom and I blow up some damaged or just small minion and it gives me a Pit Lord, I'm just getting a 5-6. He won't deal the 5 damage to me. So in that case, that's amazing for 5 mana. You get a 5-6 creature and you killed something. Like If it gets the Doom Guard, a 5-7 with charge, that's craziness. And again, like I don't know what happens if you get Jaraxxus. He has stats, right? His stats are 315, so I guess you get a 315 creature. Probably. I don't think you because normally he replaces your hero, you saw in the previous run. So this is really interesting. That's such a hard choice that I've been talking about for like five minutes, it feels like, and I don't know which I should choose. This is much more likely to be castable. This is good in situations where I'm behind, and it's still good in situations where I'm ahead. This is not very useful in situations where I'm ahead, and it's only castable very late game, so a lot of the time it's going to be a dead card in my hand. So I'm probably just a flat-out moron for doing this, but I'm going to take the Bane of Doom, because I'm going to be able to use it more often. Or am I? Ah, oh, I can't decide. Ugh. You know what? I'm going to take the Twisting Nether, because it's hurting me too much to not take it. It is Wrath of God. Now, in Magic the Gathering, Wrath of God, which did the same thing, only cost four, which, if anything, is almost cheaper than a four-cost card in, uh, well, no, I guess it's more expensive than a four-cost, more expensive than a four-cost card in Hearthstone, but much less expensive than eight-cost, it feels like. Wrath of God was awesome. Anyway, since demons, another random demon card. Now, one thing is, if if you don't have any more demons in your deck, it can just give you a 1-1 one, one crap demon. Which I'm assuming that, since that demon exists, I'm assuming that it's an al also a viable choice for Bane of Doom. You could just get a 1-1 one, one imp with no abilities, but eh. Out of these guys... Uh, this guy's tempting, but I think I'm going to take the Dark Scale Healer. It's I, I've sort of warmed up to it. It's... You know, one more than a Yeti, but it has an ability that's worth about one, so, okay. Here's another extra rare sort of card. We've got the Young Priestess, who is pretty efficient. The Angry Chicken, which is junk, because it requires a combo to be even remotely functional. She's very efficient in that. The Doom Guard, here's the thing. I'm not a huge fan of the Doom Guard. Discarding two cards is horrible, which means you you don't play him early in the game, like when you get up to five. You basically only play him when you only when you have hardly anything left in your hand. Preferably, you'd empty your hand before casting him. But for five mana, you can sort of do that, and a five seven with charge can totally swing the game. You can kill your opponent from out of nowhere; they don't expect it. You could maybe just kill a creature, and he's still out there. I think I'm going to have to take him. There's more firepower. Um, apparently this can destroy enemy demons. Which is bullshit. I hate cards like that. It, this is a hoser for other warlocks. It is a card that specifically hoses an enemy warlock if you're playing them. You're like, oh, you discarded two cards to play a Doom Guard. Yeah, you had to hit me once. Now I blow him up and regain the five life that he dealt to me. That is stupid. I hated it's another thing I hated in Magic the Gathering. I hate it here. Cards that specifically target one class, which is what this really is. Because I was I always saw it as a sacrificial pack, right? I thought you had to sacrifice one of your own demons. I just assumed the friendly part. And that's like a garbage card. But if you can blow up enemy demons, then it goes from garbage card to way overpowered if you're against another warlock. It's just dumb. Anyway, I'm not taking it, despite how it would be overpowered in one out of nine possible matchups. Shatter's Unclear, good. Dragon Lane Mechanic is also very good. Um, it's kind of a tough choice. I'm going to go with the Dragon Lane Mechanic. It's just a more... It's only one more mana, and it is giving me more power than the Shattered Sun Clear. It's arguable. Uh, out of these guys, he's pretty decent. He's... I still don't like him. I find him kind of overcosted. 
Now, if he cost four, he'd probably be too good. I would definitely use him if he cost four, but I just I don't like his stats very much for a f for five mana. Yeah. He's okay. I think I'm gonna take the Grizzly though because I I've already got some expensive stuff, and again I sort of feel like that three and four cost range is where games are won, and especially lower cost stuff is at a premium for a Warlock because you can use two mana to draw another card. So you want to be able to cast two things every turn potentially. Now this is pretty interesting. This is my regular 10th card rare. Violet Teacher is actually pretty good. I keep sort of like I turning her down for other stuff because she looks wrong. I can remember she costs four, she's a three five, so she has one less attack than a Yeti and she has an ability that can generate creatures for you if you have spells. I don't have that many spells yet, I don't know about that. Void Terror is pretty okay. I, he has drawbacks. He's, he, it depends on the matchup, whether you want to actually consolidate your creatures that way, although it's nice that you can attack with the creature. And in, if you're attacking the enemy player, if they don't have Taunt, you can attack with your stuff and then sacrifice it to him. But you're losing any abilities they had, and I don't know. I've been trying him out and constructed a little. He's not helping me that much. Knife Juggler is amazing, though. So I'll stop wasting your time. This is a good card. Goes really well with the Void guy that I passed up. But... Gives a minion plus four, plus four, until end of turn, and then at the end of the turn it dies. You can use this to trade a small creature to kill a big one. You can use this to just do four more damage to your opponents to finish them off. That's pretty good. On the other hand, River Crocolisk is just another solid creature. Uh, I guess I'll take this. I can hopefully get more junky creatures later on. Uh, I don't have weapons, although Bloodsail Raiders are pretty good. I like to have one Soul Fire in the deck, although I like it less when I have the Doom Guard. I don't like when I have these discard a random card cards in my hand and I get into a conflict, because I don't want to play this until it's the last card in my hand. I don't want to play this until it's the last card in my hand. If I have them both in my hand, I'm going to be annoyed, and one of them is going to get lost. It's just a fact. I should still probably take this, though. It can kill something, it can damage players, it costs zero, which is amazing. Yeah, Alright. Um, he's low cost, efficient helps burn down your opponent. She can help finish off your opponent, which is pretty sweet, although I've got the Doom Guard for that, hopefully. She is strong that way. She can kill a creature, or she can just kill your opponent when they're not expecting it. It's a very good late game. I think i got to take the Harvest Golem, though, because he's just so efficient to keep me going. He's a fun thing to uh, power overwhelming. <laughs> he feels expendable. I mean, you're still losing a creature from doing it, but it doesn't feel like it. Um... None of these guys, he's a little on the expensive side. Uh, she's going to give me two creatures for the price of one, so I'm sort of focusing on that kind of stuff. I've got another chance to take a Reckless Rocketeer. Which, again, I probably should, but Drain Life can kill a creature. In Constructed, I don't think I'm even using these anymore, but in the Arena, this is still another... Like, I don't have that many things that kill creatures. This is another thing that kills creatures, plus... Like, it's inefficient for the mana in terms of killing power, but restoring two health does help to negate your warrior abilities thing. You can also get this guy who's another taunt creature. No, I'll take the drain light. This is tough. This Blood Imps, I've been gaining more respect for Blood Imps. They are pretty good. Again, it's because the, when it dies, that health goes away last. Like, it, they only... Whatever. I'm just blabbing all over the place. Hellfire is very good to have. Have, like, a board clear. Plus, if you have fatter things than your opponent, it's not a board clear. You can actually clear out their stuff, and yours might survive. But I do have the Twisting Nether for, like, late game doing that. Mortal Coil can draw me another card and kill something. And that's pretty sweet. I don't have any spell power to boost it, so it's not, not as good as it is in my constructed deck. 
Mm. Man, tough choices. I don't have that many things that can survive the Hellfire. I think... Yeah, I'm going to go with the Mortal Coil. Probably dumb. People have used this to great effect against me. It does. It has four toughness, so it's not that easy for your opponent to kill or if you get it out early. Now, you do kind of have to put it out when you already have an advantage. But unlike the uh, Pine Size Summoner, you can also use it immediately. You get this later in the game. It doesn't reduce the cost of one cost, guys, but it does let me cast a lot of these things for one mana, which is pretty grossly powerful. I think I'm going to take it. I'm going to try it out. Give it another shot. Another power overwhelming, which I'm going to pass on. Use the Wolf Rider to kill things, which would be awesome with the portal, and just like draw a card and then be able to play him right away. He's pretty good with power overwhelming, but I can't take them both. I'm inclined more towards taking more creatures, because I've been taking a fair number of spells otherwise. Or there's a Shattered Sun Cleric, who is very good. Uh, I'm going to take her. Another cheese packed. I'm going to take the Warden. He can help keep me alive, which is good. Okay, I don't need two Doom Guards. That's excessive. On the other hand, Void Terror, like... I mean, if he's the only creature, he's a 3-3 three, three for 3, it's fine. So it's getting weird when he's using his ability to sacrifice things. Sometimes he can get too big, right? He just makes himself a... He, like, takes two other creatures that you had and one other card that you could have had instead of this, converts them all into one card that your opponent can polymorph, or hex, or... It's really bad for, like, you have a bunch of things that are smaller, and then you turn them into one big thing against a priest, and the priest is like, oh, finally, I can use my kill card, because it can only kill large things. Boom. Or I guess big game hundred or something. I don't like that reducing the number of creatures part. So it's hard. I don't need that many Doom Guards. Like I've already got too much. I've got Soul Fire and a Doom Guard. I don't really want to let this guarding. I guess I'll just take the Cobra. Don't have weapons. You're going to draw me a card, so I'm going to take you. Out of those guys. Finally, a Siphon Soul. This thing's amazing. I need the, my Constructed deck doesn't have any of these, and it really feels wrong to be playing Warlock without them. On the other hand, the Sunwalker is really good. It would help out a lot in terms of keeping me alive for other stuff to happen. Ah. Uh, six mana. Kill anything. And by the way, you gain three life. Just as a bonus. This can... This is more likely to kill two things, but this is more likely to kill exactly what I want when I want it. Ah. Uh, I'm going to take the Sunwalker. I want to have more creatures. Probably dumb, but I do need things to kill my opponent. I don't like the flame map. I didn't really like it that much when it was 2 damage, and apparently it was overpowered because they buffed it up to 3 damage it does to you. The thing is, you're taking 3 damage where you could get a creature just as good for 2 mana. And actually, for 2 mana, you should be able to get a creature that is the same stats and has a good ability. I don't find that... Like, yeah, it does let you have really strong opening moves, but later in the game it's hurting you for no good reason. I'm going to take the Silver Hand Knight because it's stronger overall. Even though I should probably take the Archer to combo with my card drawing and stuff. Uh, this stupid guy. He's a 3-5 taunt for 3. Yay! That's one less than Ascendant Shieldmaster. Except he blows up one of your mana. Which, if you waited one turn and played the Shieldmaster... You would not blow up one of your mana crystals. It'd take one turn longer to reach maximum mana and all that stuff. So I don't like him. Uh, Pyromancer is pretty strong. I'll take him. You can get another Shadow Bolt or another Warden or more card drawing. I am going to draw a lot of cards. I'm probably going to deck death myself because I am a Warlock. I find I don't use this ability as much if I have other card drawing, funny enough. Not using this... This ability is great if you use it three or four times in a game. If you're using it more than that, you're taking a horrendous amount of damage. So, 
you can't just use it at will every turn without suffering consequences. You take a ton of damage, and you needed that mana to, like, cast things. Uh, Warden or Shadow Bolt? I guess Shadow Bolt. Last time I had a choice between a, a killing card and a creature, I took the I took the strong taunt creature, so this time, even it out, take the killing card. Um, don't like Wisps. Take, need one of these guys. This guy's kind of more efficient, like, mana-wise. This guy's more efficient card-wise. He's giving you a bigger creature. It has some ability to survive stuff. It gives you a little bit more health. And just if I happened to have out my summoning portal, this guy would cost one as well, which would be awesome. I'm going to take him. And I'm going to take another Shadow Bolt, so I can just keep blowing up creatures all day long. Um, this is a tough choice. He's so random. Usually bad. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm going to take the Cult Master, but it seems kind of excessive given him already a Warlock. I already have ways to draw cards. Out of these guys, I'm taking the Abusive Sergeant. I need more of that. Like, he's low cost and amazing. Oh, and I'm at my last card already, and it is a shitty one to make up for all those extra rares I got. Have the Lord of All Murlocs, which would be fine if I had Murlocs, but I'm never going to have enough Murlocs to make that good. The rare character is healed, gain plus two attack. It does work if my opponent is healing. There's mostly just a one two for one. Or the Ancient Watcher, which I could sacrifice to the Void Terror, which I didn't take. Or I could silence it, but I didn't get anything that silences, so it looks like I'm taking her, even though it's lame. Remember, this guy, if my opponent had Murlocs, it would actually boost their Murlocs. So, as much as I'd rather have a 2-3 than a 1-2, he's also expensive for that. So, yeah, I guess it's Light Warden. Crappy card to end out with, but yeah, it's interesting. I've got a lot of Shadow Bolts and cards to kill creatures. I kill creatures all day long, and I have some fat creatures, so hopefully it'll work out. If you're wondering where my map is right now, uh, currently the glue is drying on my pathetic homemade arts and crafts project of basically putting some putting a few holes through it near the top and then reinforcing those holes on both sides with washers super glued on. Because I, wa I want to make it so that I can just have a few like screws in the wall and I can just pick it up, take it down. Or put it, or hang it back up easily. And then if this works out, I might be able to get additional posters and do the same thing. Which would be cool. I do lots of, I do random stuff. I'm all very, like, practical and not at all helping the value of my home. These are all pretty decent cards. You're garbage, but if I'm going to get you, you might as well be at the start. I'm going to get review because you're expensive, and... What the hell, I'm going to get rid of you too. I have a lot of... You know, and my deck's got a fair amount of three and three cost and less things. It's about half and half, so well odds are okay. I'm not big on chatting. I'm chatting with you. I don't need to talk to this guy. I'm just antisocial that way. So I could coin out loot hoarder. That seems kind of silly when I have a one drop. So we'll just do that. Uh, I might be coining out this summoning portal. That'd be interesting. I might just be coining out the Harvest Golem. Gotta see what my opponent does. At least if he makes a 1-1, one, one, I can beat it up. And be like, ha-ha, I win! Giant win for the Light Warden if he makes a token and I get to kill it with her. She would have, like, done her job. Yes! <laughs> I'm happy with this turn of events. You basically done nothing with your turn. My crappy card is paid for itself. Everyone wins. So I could point out a harvest golem and be okay. I could point out the blade master actually. That's much more aggressive. I like that move. I could if I waited one turn, I could coin this out, but that's not that useful unless I had one more mana so that I could also play something three costs that turn. I'm I'm just gonna hold on to it for now. I think I like the coin out the blade master. He is a pretty powerful creature to have out at this stage of the game. 
And I don't have any of my minion killing spells. I don't have any removal to protect him, unfortunately. So if my opponent puts out a taunt creature that has more than one toughness, which, as far as I know, all taunt creatures have more than one toughness, then, yeah, won't do me much good. I wonder. But we'll see what he does. Um, he does nothing? That is fantastic. Oh, tough choice. Do I kill him with Mortal Coil? Which would only be keeping her alive, which is kind of sad. But on the other hand, she is a source of damage that would be staying on the board, and I would draw a card to replace it. I could do that and cast a Loot Hoarder, or I could cast a Harvest Golem. Harvest Golem is only going to cost one the turn I play the Summoning Portal, though. If I play this fifth turn... Drop this and him for one. Kind of liking that. So I think I'm going to kill this guy. Draw a card. I want that card. I want to get more of my stuff that can kill creatures. Because it'll help. And it lets me just like aggressively beat him down. Uh, these guys are probably going to get consecrated. But I still draw a card from him if that's the case. So it's a little bit of hedging my bets there. And he survives a consecrate. Which is part of why he's awesome. So... If my opponent's play is just to Consecrate this turn, I'm actually fine with that. So at that point, I will be way ahead in this game. And I still have a plan to play a Summoning Portal and start dropping three cost creatures for one. I've got the beast in my sights. Okay. Yeah, Alright, fair enough. It's going to work the same as a Consecrate, except it costs him two cards. Right? Because I can just Thanks knock off the bubble hunt. with her. Oh. Junkie anyway. I'll trade him to kill it. Thus protecting my injured Blade Master. And drawing a card. And hit you for four. Now. Do I play... Th I don't want to play this. I'm going to play this and use it right away. I would be able to play more stuff overall if I play this first, and the next turn all my things will cost two less, and I'll just, like, drop my whole hand. But that leaves it in play to get beat up, and I'd rather get to use it once before it has a chance to get beat up, whereas this guy is pretty tough. He can survive pretty much anything my paladin can do, and also prevents some charge creature from coming out and killing him. Yeah, he can't survive that. That's pretty good use of the Kodo, I'll give you that. So how does that change my play? Dark Scale Healer would actually heal my Blade Master, which is kind of cool. But it wouldn't actually defeat this, so it doesn't really work out. Now, interestingly, the Summoning Portal is big enough to survive one hit from that. Plus, I can play it and then play my Taunt Grizzly, who is just meat to this thing. Like, it'll kill it. But if he does that, I can drain life it. Everything looks like it's coming up in my favor from that plan. So we're going to try that. Protect the portal. Your turn to bleed. Just keep beating my opponent's face in. If this thing stays out long enough for me to drop my hand, then I can start drawing more cards and really abusing it, which is why he needs to kill it. His ideal turn right now would be mm. Geomancer and Hammer of whatever Your this magic thing. Shall not save. Ah. I don't know, dude. I think you should have silenced this. You should have silenced the summoning portal, because you can't kill it with the Kodo. Yeah, you can do that, but... Oh, I don't think that's going to work out how you wanted it to, buddy. Wow. So much stuff. So I can drain life that, and cost me three mana, which is actually taking a chunk out of what I can cast this turn. Funnily enough. Unfortunately... So this guy just doesn't quite have enough toughness, because I'd love to dam hit, hit something with him, have him take a little damage, but survive, and then heal him with the Dark Scale. That would kick ass. Not going to happen. So I could Drain Life, 
play this and draw a card, or I could drain life and play the Dark Sail Healer, which is a 4-5. It would be pretty good. Bad things are going to happen to my portal if I don't kill a bunch of his creatures. I think I have to do the drain life. Although, I could play the Sunwalker. And I could play him. And I could trade my bear for that. And he would have to use both of his creatures to hit the sun. Actually, the Sunwalker can survive all of that if it doesn't get silenced or something. I'll maybe try that plan. Seems kind of silly to leave the photo alive, but whatever. This lets me put out a lot of stuff. It's a risk-reward thing. This, the reward for doing it this way is pretty great if he doesn't have a silence or something else to uh, to just blow up the Sunwalker. Because she just owns the creatures he has in play. And frankly, she's big enough that it's not... I don't. There aren't a lot of good ways for him to get rid of her. Aw, oh, damn it. That's obnoxious. Because now he replays the Kodo, and it might blow up my summoning portal. We must cleanse the Sunwell. He did not replay the Kodo. Shield up. Okay, he's going for that. I mean, that's a big army, so that's reasonable. But I thought he would replay the Kodo. Well, I guess it's only a 50/50 chance he would kill my summoning portal, but not killing my summoning portal seems really risky. I wish I could choose to have her not use the bubble, but that would be a silly game mechanic. Because if I could just attack something, take the damage, and then heal it with the dark scale, that would kick ass. So oh, man. Possibilities. There are so many possibilities. I need three mana to kill her, I guess. Uh, this is probably going to kill off that. And the dark seal doesn't help with it. I'm going to draw a card first and see what I get. Like this will give me more information. I'm going to have a backup taunt creature. That's always good. I think I'm going to have to use her to kill that. Even though it uses her bubble, she's still going to be super strong. So let's do that. Justice shall prevail. We need to drain life this one first so that I can attack the uh, fairy dragon. And then I could play the Dark Scale, which I'm sort of thinking of holding on to. I'm still kind of dominating this, although my army is mostly small creatures. I can play the Void Walker and draw a card. I'm going to draw the card first and see what I get. Oh, that's right. I have a Summoning Portal. I can actually... I don't need the Void Walker right now. I can play that. Oh. The Summoning Portal is insane when your opponent can't kill it. And I don't think it's my opponent's fault. Paladin doesn't have all that many things that can do four damage efficiently and feels like he's been not in the greatest situation for that. Yes! Missed the summoning portal. He should have done it last turn when it was a 50-50 chance. That's what it feels like to me. He's running out of cards and I am not going to run out of cards anytime soon. I'm going to beat his army's face in. Yeah, I've got a fully intact Sunwalker. Now I can do what I wanted, which is have the Sunwalker take some, like, use the Sunwalker in a way where she takes some damage, and then heal her with the uh, Dark Scale. So that's pretty cool. So this plus Shadow Bolt will kill that. That's pretty so good. I think I'm going to do that. Possibility. Oh, if you're sure. <laughs> Probably should have drawn a card first, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be drawing a card. And it's dumb not to do it first. So let's actually do that. Yeah, okay. Doesn't really change my turn. Maybe it would have, but no, I don't think so. And now I'm going to Justice kill that. Shall and then I'm going to play the Dark Sail Healer. Now, it's going to be fairly easy for that to take out the Sunwalker. But I can't really do anything about it. Yeah, okay, whatever. Can't attack the stealth creature anyway. I can't so far the stealth creature anyway, even if I was willing to lose a card, which I might actually right now, because I'm so far ahead. I have full I have almost full life and I can draw cards. Ah, oh, damn it. Well at least she does she doesn't get the divine shield as a morph thing, but wow, that is a lot of taunt all of a sudden. Quite the army you have there. He's probably... No, he is going to attack with that. Okay, interesting. I wasn't sure. 
Okay, step one, draw a card, see what I get. Shadow Bolt is good. So Shadow Bolt plus Pyromancer would kill the enemy uh, Sunwalker. Dark Scale Healer plus Damaged Golem would also kill that, but if this goes off, it's going to kill my Sunwalker, actually. So I'm going to have to use her instead of the Dark Scale to do damage. In that case, I should just go like that. Then Shadow Bolt I this thing, wonder. or no, attack this thing for two, then Shadow Bolt it, and it'll take one from the Pyromancer, and then that works out. Yeah, okay. Justice shall prevail. Oh. Bloop. Bloop. I'm just going to soul fire him now. It's probably done, because I'm sure I could have still emptied my hand next turn. Oh, that was super dumb. Yay! That's okay. I think I can win this game despite that incredibly dumb move, because I forgot about my own stupid guy. Oh, he's got the equality. Does he have the equality consecrate? Reporting for duty. No, but he does have a secret. Hmm. It's going to be an eye for an eye, maybe? Yeah. We'll find out. Oh, yeah, I know what it is. It's Noble Sacrifice. That's right. Makes a lot more sense. However... Get in there. Fight, maggot. Don't mess with Tusk. Well played. There we go. So, one dumb move, but I think that part of the reason I made that dumb move is because I was I knew I was so far in the lead. Like, my opponent had no cards and no stuff. So I knew that I had basically won the game at that point, and that my thought process is started, like, ramping down. It's like, okay, we'll, uh, you know, just cut down on power consumption and just, like, uh, let's win! I don't know. Anyhow... We got one and zero warlock deck. It's gonna be an interesting run. Is that that's what I feel like? That's so far that's the best prediction I'm willing to make. It's gonna be interesting. Next time. If you enjoyed this, please activate the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Demon Knight Games for more Hearthstone Arena and other gaming videos.